Hyundai are aiming high with this fourth generation version of their Tucson, a now more stylish and very sharp suited family mid-sized SUV aimed at the top end of the Qashqai class. We're told it'll change the way you drive, which should certainly change this Korean brand's fortunes in this sector. Wanting to improve the drive demeanour of its volume models, Hyundai's tried with this one to make a few small changes to ride and handling balance. Steering feel, usually pretty lifeless with any mainstream Hyundai, actually now clues you in to what's happening beneath the front wheels, courtesy of a new rack now sourced from a European supplier. And a lot of work's been done to try and improve the McPherson strut front and multi-link independent rear suspension setup featured on the previous model. Adaptive damping is now optional. The biggest changes, though, are reserved for beneath the bonnet. Diesel has been completely ditched, and the core engine lineup based around one primary power plant with multiple electrified variations. Hyundai has chosen to use its 1.6 litre TGDI petrol turbo direct injection smart stream unit as the base starting point here which in the mainstream range was from launch offered either in conventional 150 PS form or with the same output using the brand's MHEV mild hybrid tech. Opt for the latter and you get the option of 7 DCT auto transmission or a more sophisticated IMT or intelligent manual transmission which decouples the engine from the gearbox after the driver releases the accelerator. In auto form, the MHEV model can also be had with four-wheel drive and a higher 180 PS output. Ultimately though, for electrified engine technology that will really make a difference to your Tucson, you'll need some sort of full hybrid powertrain. Your options for that, beginning with the two-wheel drive only HEV hybrid model. Here, a Prius-style self-charging petrol electric engine working with a six-speed auto gearbox is mated to a 60 PS electric motor powered by a 1.49 kilowatt hour battery, which provides sufficient extra urge to up the combined power output to 230 PS. As for the WLTP efficiency figures, well, the HEV variant manages up to 49.6 mpg on the combined cycle and up to 127 grams per kilometer of CO2. If you've got the budget to go further, then there's the top plug-in hybrid 4x4 model we're trying here, which uses a somewhat gutsier 91 PS electric motor powered by a considerably bigger 13.8 kilowatt hour battery pack. Well, this model can be charged from a three-pin ICCB supply in 6 hours and 30 minutes from empty to 95%. Use the kind of 7 kilowatt wall box you'd obviously install at home if you were to choose a plug-in hybrid. That'll take 1 hour and 42 minutes. This is supposed to provide for up to 38 miles of all-electric driving. The Mark IV version of this Hyundai mid-sized SUV is all about sharp angles, dynamic proportions and rich surfacing. The kind of thing you'll notice from a front end that really is guaranteed to get the neighbours taking a second glance over the fence. And when the lights are off, the nose section appears to be covered in dark geometric patterns. Hyundai calls these parametric jewels. Some of them are made up of so-called parametric hidden lights. The daytime running lamps that cause parts of the grill to spring into life in jewel-like shapes with clever half-mirror technology and twinkling LED illumination when the ignition is fired. It's all rather effective. More artful design features at the rear where the brand badge arches into the tailgate glass and LED tail lamps feature an angled ribbed design with more parametric hidden lights. The profile perspective, it's cab forward stance and swept back shaping with black roof rails disguising a 20 millimeter increase in length for this NX4 series model isn't conventional either. In fact, we're not sure we've ever seen a silhouette with quite as much of a riot of chiseled edging and conflicting creases as this one. With revolution prioritized over evolution outside, it would be a big disappointment to find a return to conventionality within. Fortunately, that's not what you're served up behind the wheel, where 
Hyundai promises what it calls an advanced and fully customizable digital experience. In this case, what that gets you is a fully digital, configurable, dual cockpit screen design that features a 10.25 inch instrument cluster display paired with a center stack AVN touchscreen of the same size. It's all a massive improvement from the drab interior of the previous generation model and is complemented by a high center console flowing into a center stack that for the first time on a Hyundai is fully touchscreen orientated. There's certainly lots to adjust to here. The usual cowl over the instrument clusters missing. And for those not wanting a stick shift, Hyundai has dispensed with an auto gear stick favoring big Fisher Price style silver center console buttons instead. There's a curiously styled four spoke steering wheel with unusual lower silver detailing and providing you avoid entry level trim, there's no ignition key either. Just this rather hidden silver fascia start button. Now, whether or not you really like all of this depends on how you feel about modern technology. But whatever your perspective on that, you can't deny the Tucson has much more of a premium feel this time round. Quality materials and soft touch surfacing everywhere you look. All round visibility is a little compromised, but the seats are comfortable and there's plenty of cabin storage. Time to take a look in the rear. Sure enough, the back seat now has a slightly more spacious area feel that's backed up by a measurement suggesting that passengers back here will now enjoy another 26 millimetres of legroom with lots of space to slide your feet beneath the front seats. There's near class leading headroom too with both attributes unaffected should you opt for either a full hybrid or as here a plug-in drivetrain. We'll finish with a look in the boot which unless you've splashed out on a top trim level you'll have to raise yourself. Now the space you'll get within will depend a lot on the powertrain you've chosen for your Tucson. This plug-in hybrid variant offers only 558 litres of space, which is the sort of thing you might expect given the need for the underfloor battery system. But it's disappointing to find that the MHEV mild hybrid model most Tucson customers are likely to choose, which has a tiny battery, is almost as compromised with 577 litres of space. For some reason, the full hybrid HEV variant manages to be a lot better in this respect, offering 616 litres, nearly as much as the completely unelectrified, conventionally engined base derivative, where it's 620 litres. The rear bench folds almost flat and releases up to 1,737 litres of space in this plug-in model. It's 1,756 litres in the mild hybrid version, 1,795 in the hybrid and 1,799 with the conventionally engined model. Hyundai isn't shy about charging for this fourth generation Tucson, but when you look at what you get, there's still a lot being delivered for your not inconsiderable outlay. Though you could also say that about the identically engineered Kia Sportage, which can be slightly cheaper. And while we're raising potential issues, we'll also point out that if you habitually tow heavy loads, then this car's new era hybrid powertrains won't suit you at all. And other rivals are slightly better in dealing with slippery surfaces, or they'll deliver four wheel drive for the kind of asking price Hyundai no longer wants to try and match. For all that, there's no doubt that this career maker has turned quite a corner here. A switch from delivering the kind of mid-sized SUV you might need to one you might genuinely really want, which of course, as every modern brand knows, makes all the difference in the world in such an overcrowded segment. The Tucson model line needed a bit of a spark to really ignite its appeal. Well, that's been delivered here in every sense.